A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Verily, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own selves and from the evils of our own actions. And whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, none can guide back to the correct path. We testify there is no deity worthy of our worship except for Allah, who is alone in a partnership and never has and never will be another. And we bear witness that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is the last and the final prophet of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My brothers and sisters, friends and family, everybody tuning in to the live stream. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, thank you for joining me for this wonderful Friday of reminders. Today is the 16th of Safar, 1445 after the Hijra or September the 1st, 2023 of the Common Era. My name is Brother Daniel from the Northeast Chapter of Embrace. And for today's Friday reminder, I want to reflect on a topic that causes an attrition of our good deeds and distances ourselves from the love and the mercy of Allah Azzawajal. So as Muslims, we know we've been instructed to adhere to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and undoubtedly the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu is in this day and age, in modern era, easily accessible to any who wish to study, not only just online, but for a matter of books, distributions, online YouTube videos, or for Facebook, uh, TikTok, whatever the case may be. All of these are platforms and means for us to undertake changes and means of good excellent character inside of our lives and eventually all of these things that we wind up undertaking whether it's you know, those readings or those studying or those uh the personal jihad the jihad against oneself in order to undertake and have these sorts of qualities inside of our life these are all going to be blessings and a means for reward for us in the next life and the practice of the sunnah reviles the all inhumane and improper things or things that provide no sort of benefit and enjoins in producing good out of our thoughts, our speech, and our actions. Allah SWT mentions in Surah 3, Ali Imran, Ayat 104, in English translation, and from among you there should be a party who invite to good and join what is right and forbid the wrong. And these... It is that shall be successful. There has to be a nation among you summoning to the good, bidding what is right and forbidding what is wrong. And certainly uh, doing what is good and forbidding what is evil is one of the most important of Islamic duties and indeed is a noble and a sublime pursuit. But amongst this, we come to an impasse in our lives and a means of interactions because, well, human beings are human beings. We conflict uh, with our fellow human beings who are Muslim or not. Uh, but that one portion, the Muslim portion, is the one that I want to address today. That a lot of times there comes to the point or the conversation or it's a... I don't wish to follow an aspect of doing something because the other Muslims are not doing it. And this is most uh, most certainly an improper way of thinking. And as a matter of fact, uh, this sort of struggling to remain religiously committed in this day of religious malpractice, and nationalism, racism, classism, political agendas, or altogether are a tools and a faculty of shaitan for him to weasel his way in and attempt to dissuade the Muslims from being good, proper, kind, patient, tolerant with one another and to take our good deeds away from us. Enough to the point where we can argue because one person uh, has melancholy because of that lacking of the sunnah or interaction, rudeness, or, you know, whatever the case may be, or the other person who is striving to uphold that, and they are not uh, being returned with the same sort of etiquette. 
such as an unstoppable force and an immovable object, there is nothing that nothing good that comes from that. And one person who doesn't practice good manners or the proper suna, we then make a categorization of that person and then dissuade, undermine, and insult that person because they're not following it or and then basically perpetuates itself over and over and over again. You know, one person doesn't respond and that person doesn't wish to respond to the next person who then doesn't feel like responding to the next person and goes on and on and on. But one of the aspects of the Prophet Sallallahu was his emotional intelligence and his ability to be kind and patient with all sorts of people. And again, if we're studying in regards about the Sunnah, we can look into the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam his actions, his means, and his ways to know that even despite people being rude or despite them not responding in the way that would we understand as good Muslim etiquette or proper etiquette or good etiquette at all, the Prophet Sallallahu still upheld himself to a degree, knowing that the reward, of course, is coming in the upcoming life. And of course, we wish that certain people were away with us, but that was the way the Prophet Sallallahu was with all people, especially to his companions. There's even a mentioning inside of a hadith that once a companion asked the Prophet Sallallahu who was the most beloved to him, and the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned his wife, Aisha, and then the companion asked him again and again and again. And each time that this person or multiple people used to ask this question to the Prophet Sallallahu he would mention a different person. According to some narrations, the companions used to ask this question because he thought that he was the most beloved person to the Prophet Sallallahu And why is this? Because the Prophet Sallallahu greeted everyone. He made them feel as if they mattered, regardless of the age, the tribe, or color of their skin. When we explain and look into the character of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, scholars would even mention and say that when the Prophet ﷺ was talking to somebody, he would turn his entire body towards that person to show that he had, um, that they had his full uh, attention, even to the point where, uh, regardless of what the issue was or what they were bringing up, it still made them feel as if he was giving them the world of his time, uh, his thoughts and his attention. So why, of course, did these you know, uh, companions think that they, uh, you know, uh, companions believe that they were the most important? Of course, again, he was polite, treated equal uh, to everybody. Uh, he gave them attention and he made people feel loved. Can we say to ourselves, I mean, beyond the aspect of our, our family, of course, you know, and even there's some, uh, our, uh, you know, maybe there's aspects in regards for even personal family, aunties, uncles, maybe there's uh, distant relatives whatnot that we may shy away from or uh, feel somewhat bitter towards them for whatever reason, you know, whether it's their fault, our own, or just a means of uh, miscommunication. That is a whole different topic and whatnot. But in the same sense, you know, are we finding ways to, be merciful to one another the same way how we wish people would be for us. And in the same case, if we know this and accept this and believe that this is true, despite the fact of what other people may do, despite what they have to say, we should pay no attention to those who put us down, who despise or mock you for the actions which we know are the following of the Prophet Islam, which is good and Whatever the case may be, you will be rewarded in the end. So I ask my brothers and sisters to this day and time, do what you can to continue to persevere in the means of following the example of the Prophet Sallallahu and the means of researching and looking into the manners of the Prophet Sallallahu the things he used to do, the way how his companions used to interact with one another with complete uh, love and commitment towards one another uh, to a beautiful sort of circumstances where many of us do not feel or understand to this day. But with that, may we increase our love for the Ummah. May we increase in brotherhood and sisterhood to have that sort of beloved interaction, even to the point where Allah SWT will look upon us and provide a shade on the day of judgment, the day where there will be no shade except for 
his shade from his throne where every hour every interaction that we have with our brothers or our sisters our fellow brothers or our fellow sisters is going to be for the sake of Allah and complete love and commitment um, and a revelant of good qualities with one another. May that love increase for all of us and make us among the successful and those who are of the highest qualities adhering to the Sunnah of the Prophet. Allahumma subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ashira wa la ilaha ila anta sabbatu wa rakibu alayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.